Thank you, Bishop Susan, and thank you for not bringing the Wikipedia page, which <laughs> often has incorrect information. <laughs> there is a little bit of incorrect no. information. <laughs> yeah. All right. This is what we started with. Current slide. Caring for the garden, that's what I want us to look at in the coming couple of days. And I'm going to divide it up into three sessions. Um, we're going to talk about creation and your and our connection with the rest of creation in the first chunk. And in the second one, we're going to think about lament and what's wrong. And I think we're going to do that early this afternoon. And the third session, we're going to talk about how to heal things. Does that make sense? And let me say that if you can't read the board, um, come up forward, because there's there are some slides that have fairly small print on them. Okay. A steward, I'm gonna go, sorry, I'm gonna go back one. Stewards of creation. A steward comes from words like sty, S-T-Y. Uh, in Old English, as a pen or a room, and a weird is somebody who takes care of that and manages what's going on in that place. <clears throat> the steward is somebody who guards the household. Um, but we are in many ways failed stewards. Um, that's part of our being. We don't do things perfectly. Um, we destroy and compromise God's creation all the time. You know, we step on animals, we step on insects. We uh, use uh, pesticides and other things to get rid of the ones that feel dangerous to us or uncomfortable. Um, and we are born with the capacity to deny the goodness of creation. But we're also born with the capacity to partner and heal the brokenness of creation. Look closely at the dark. There are two translations of the first part of Genesis. I looked at the new RSV. And below it, part of the Hebrew Bible, the translation by Robert Alter, which comes straight from the Hebrew and is often much more interesting. <laughs> Alter uses the, the words welter and waste. Welter comes from roots like volta and waltz and revolve, which I think is way more interesting. And tohu wobohu, sometimes translated as confusion, but I'm going to suggest to you the word chaos. Chaos isn't destructive necessarily, even though most people use the word that way. Chaos is a, a mode of openness and emptiness. And if we, in the second phrase, think about darkness covering the face of the deep, there's already some pattern emerging from that chaos. Chaos of the cold and dark of space, the mind of God. And when we look at cosmic inflation, which is how the cosmos grows, or sufflation, think about God's breath or wind moving into that reality, hovering over the waters, inspiration. What images come to mind for you? Welcome to shout them out. <laughs> Please. Like when the, the water moves over the surface, of uh, the wind moves over the surface of the water. The water's not there yet, but the wind would move through the, the chaos and, and have a path. Thank you. Anybody else? 
I think in that water swirling, I mean, maybe, maybe similar to what Jean said, as the wind um, inspires it, it, it swirls. And maybe even so chaotically. And I'm going to just claim over and over again that the chaotic manner of creation is part of its creativity. Yes. Yes. And we have, we have misjudged that word and way of thinking. Yes. Because if it's all black and white, we don't go anywhere. It's like the, the black isn't black. The black is, is white black and black and white and bits and pieces and you can see all of the movement in the black picture. It looks like waves and sea and not. I'm often comforted by the fact that God's first created act came out of chaos. <laughs> I think um, I'm somebody who both loves the ocean and has a healthy fear of it. <laughs> and, so, and having lived in many coastal cities, I, I see beauty in the chaos, but also danger. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. We live in an area of hurricanes which both build up new islands and take others away. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. <laughs> Somebody else. Yeah. 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 Okay, well keep keep that in the back of your mind, if you will. We're meant to be performative is often used as a as a pejorative. But I want to claim that it is what God is doing. Trees and flowers, birds and bees, the fish and the sea creatures, the legged animals and the snakes, the ongoing ages of creativity, organic molecules, algae, single-celled organisms, Riots of cephalopods, those squids and octopuses and other things. Insects, dinosaurs becoming birds, petite mammals, to whales. We're meant to be partners of creation, not tyrants or despots or avoiders of responsibility. The performative word means to fulfill and provide, if you look at the etymology. To fulfill. God calls creation into being. God calls stewards to hearken, to become, to reflect our creator. We're made to be created. And we live in containers. A universe, a forest, a river, a cell, that's how we started, a cell, a mind. Containers that seem to be necessary to creative interactions. Because the alternative is dissipation, estrangement, scattering. We're, con we're created to be containers which hold together the lively interactions among our myriad kin. The heart and hand of God contain us and contain all creation. Creation has myriad patterns on a theme that are ever evolving, and remember that's part of the Tohu Wabod, the welter, the waltz. Astrobiologists are finding hints, hints only thus far, of organic systems on other worlds. And we're going to send several um, 
several <coughs> containers <laughs> to other parts of the solar system to look for what's going on on those worlds. And one is going in next, but one went on April this year, and one's going next year in October, and another one's going in 2027 to Saturn. <coughs> There clearly are oceans on other worlds, watery environments under crusts of ice, or deeper within the planet or planetoid. Those probes are going to sample those extraterrestrial oceans, looking for similar kinds of watery systems. And the energy systems are most likely going to be chemosynthetic rather, rather than photosynthetic, getting energy from minerals or mineral compounds like hydrogen sulfide. We're still exploring systems and energy systems in Earth environments. I'm going to show you a picture in just a minute. Um, that has to do with hydrothermal vents. You know, you know something about crustal movement on this planet, and when the, the, the islands of rock move apart uh, because of the upwelling of lava, basically, um, they, the mid-Atlantic ridge and rift, uh, the rift parts and hot water comes up from the midst of that rift. This is a picture of something that's called a black smoker. Our terrestrial ocean is filled with all sorts of wild and wonderful creation that we had nothing, that we didn't know anything about until fairly recently. This system is, the, what's coming out of the tubes is hot water that's heated by the rift below it, uh, the lava, the magma that is moving. And it's filled with all kinds of minerals. There's no sunlight in this, in this situation. It's thousands of feet down. And the hydrothermal microbes, the hot living bacteria basically, harvest energy through chemosynthesis. They use compounds like hydrogen gas, ammonia, iron, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. Those bacteria, those microbes, are the primary producers in this system. They produce organic matter, and they're in turn grazed by other animals. Limpets, filtered, by, filtered from the water by mussels, uh, and I'm going to show you a very interesting one. It's called a tube worm, a vent tube worm. They're this tall. And they grow that size in about two years. So there's lots of energy, there's lots of material for growth in these dark places. They host commensal. What does commensal mean? Eating together in the same place. That's what we do at this table. They're commensal um, chemosynthesizing bacteria. We have loads of those in our own guts. They make vitamins, they uh, make uh, hormones uh, sometimes. They, they shape who we become physically and emotionally at times. Uh, there are most 10 times as many microbes in our gut as there are cells in our body. So our guts run our lives in many ways. They, they produce uh, nutrients, they affect pathogens, they um, control some immune responses. In a two-worms uh, life, those bacteria fix organic carbon in two different ways. In sometimes when there are low oxygen environments, and uh, another way when it's high oxygen environment. And they can also harvest energy from hydrogen sulfide. 
Now look at what else is there. You see the fish? The little fish? Uh, and if you look at the other picture, there are crabs and mussels. And in this um, system, octopuses are the top predators. Hydrogen sulfide powers the whole system in place of sunshine. And they're discovering new, new aspects of this all the time. Uh, first, the first um, visual of hydrothermal systems like this happened in, I think, in 1979, when Alvin, do you know about the submarine Alvin? Okay. Um, first time they saw these things, and they've been uh, learning more and more and more and more. Okay, here's another kind of system like that. In lava caves, there are lots of these on Hawaii, um, places that are heated again by hydrothermal systems, magmatic systems underneath, um, that host, again, chemosynthetic bacteria. There isn't any sunlight in this place. And scientists, astrobiologists in particular, think that there are very possibly going to find similar systems on other planets where there are oceans and subterranean seas and lava caves. These lava caves have lots of bacteria that are actually living in, associated with, mineral deposits. Uh, calcium carbonate, uh, and in what is called a biofilm, it's a it's a a shallow covering, a film over the rock, uh, where the bacteria are actually eating the minerals in the rock to generate energy. <clears throat> There's no sunlight, uh, and on other worlds, there there may be things like this below the harsh surface conditions. They're not likely to survive on the surface. In Genesis, God says to us to be fruitful and multiply and nurture this riot of life. And God also says to have dominion for this exquisite community of life. And a little later on, I'm going to talk about dominion, how we understand it creatively and how we understand it destructively. The garden is continually playing with creative possibilities. Creation keeps playing tiny and immense variations on a the theme. <clears throat> And this was in Scientific American last month, and there's a wonderful article about the, these are the largest dinosaurs that have ever walked this earth. Uh, the very smallest ones are the size of a person. The very largest ones uh, go up to something like 60,000 metric tons. Uh, same body plan, basically, and very small uh, differences between the, between the species. And they survive for a very long time. Uh, creation seems to keep playing with the model. Uh, human beings, uh, species who weren't identified as human, uh, Earlier, earlier species who didn't didn't identify as Homo sapiens, if you will. Now, what I'm going to suggest you do and be in the next chapter of this gathering is to go out and look. I, I want you to wonder about what you see and wonder about what you don't see, um, wonder about how something makes a living, uh, wonder about who's living next to each other, uh, living, uh, wondering about who's flying around and who's crawling 
on the surface of the earth or up a tree, and who's living in the water courses here. Um, spend time in, in creation. Notice. Discover. What do you love about what you see? What do you honor? What do you treasure? What is God doing within and around you as you notice who is part of this creation? I'm going to encourage you to do some reflection. What happens within you? Your mood? Your blood pressure? Your anxiety? Gratitude? And maybe you want to make some notes about that when you go out there and look. Reflect on how you see the hand of God in creation. Do your eyes and ears and touch and smell and maybe even taste tell you something about creation? About how you value creation? And as you wander around this place, I want to encourage you to notice where and in what do you recognize a gift or gifts. And when you come back to this place later today, I think we'll take the first back to you later today. To the next session to I think we'll take the first talk with each other about what you next session did. did. But talk with each other about what, what you did you see did. and smell and hear and discover and treasure. There's that, that wonderful Hebrew word about singla that we are God's treasure. Um, can we see that treasure in God's creation? So I'd be glad to take a minute if you want to reflect out loud or reflect with your neighbor and then go. <laughs> I'm just really conscious of like an opening kind of in my heart as you're talking, but it's just like I just remember like, oh right, I'm I'm like a creature. <laughs> I'm a part of the creation. Thank you. And keep wondering. <laughs> <laughs>